Muses of Mythology is a spoiler-heavy podcast. That's an understatement. We're going to discuss not just the events of this book, but the Raiden verse as a whole, and really anything that we feel is relevant. You can find full spoiler warnings in the show notes. I am trying to see if I can find uh, movies with Demeter in it, but I gotta say it is becoming increasingly difficult with the given fact that well, two months ago, the last voyage of the Demeter came out. Oh no! Welcome to Muse of Mythology, a podcast where we explore how ancient myths become part of modern pop culture through the lens of Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This is Story 70, Demeter. I'm your co-host and podcasting muse, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, DJ. Hello, everybody. Today, I am the muse of growth because we love to see everybody learning and growing. Ah, oh, that's so good. I was really hoping... You would be the muse of cereal, so I could tell everybody about the Monster Mash remix cereal I had this morning. But instead, muse you picked something nice. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. Let's muse around in the garden. I can show All it to right. you. All right. Well, let's not keep everybody waiting. We have got another first-time guest joining us, and actually, I'm very excited because we've completed the set of <laughs> of guests. Oh, yes. Uh, Today, we are joined by writer and co-host of Camp Half-Blood. It's Erin Monahan. Hi, I'm Erin. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. I'm most excited that not only do we complete the set, but we did so back to back. That's so exciting. And then potentially Monisa again in the next one to come back and do Persephone with us. We're going to see what happens. So it's a sandwich. Oh my gosh, we're in a sandwich. Can we be an ice cream sandwich? (laughs) That sounds great to me. (laughs) Well, Erin, do you want to tell our listeners just a little bit about you? I would love to. Well, like uh, y'all did a great job. Um, like, oh, thank you. Like you said, I, uh, me and Monica co-host Camp Half Pod, where we go through in chronological order. We're currently on Trials of Apollo, and we still will be when this comes out. Yes. Um, and it's been great. It's been very chaotic. We, yeah, and ask a lot of weird questions with regard to the the books and the series. And so good. It's so good. Oh, thank you. I. It's a fun time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I like you said. I'm also a writer. I have a book called Laurel Everywhere that I published almost oh. three years ago, which is really wild. Congratulations. Yes, and I also write a lot of um, nonfiction things that I don't publicize as much because. They're about my real life, but if you Google my name, you can find things. <laughs> I'm bookmarking, Googling, doing it now. <laughs> but like, Just real quick, speaking of things that were published three years ago, as of this week, we are actually celebrating our third anniversary of being like a real podcast. Woo! Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for being here. DJ, thanks for doing a podcast with me. Yeah, of course. Love being here. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Always makes me happy to hear. So today, Erin is joining us to talk about Demeter. And usually I ask, hey, why did you want to be on this episode? But actually, Erin wanted to talk, uh, come on and talk with our Poseidon's Court episode, and scheduling just fell apart for that <laughs> one. So I would like to give you like some space here. Do you want to talk anything about Delphin or Amphitrite or Triton or oh. just dolphins? Oh, well, my claim to that one... Was that I'm a, I was a dolphin girl in my mm-hmm. youth. I was, you know, like, you know how there's horse girls? Yep. I mm-hmm. think that dolphin girls are, like, a little bit crazier than horse yes. girls. But, like, disguised. Like, the horse. For women. Exactly. These are actually <laughs> the only two options that women have is dolphin and horse. It's like, mm-hmm. dolphins are, like, the water version. Yep. <laughs> but I think that the horse girl, like, you know, you know she's a horse girl at school. But the dolphin girl, you don't know until you get invited over and you go into her bedroom. And, like. <gasps> and it's full of dolphins. My she- yeah. My sheets were dolphins. I had like a a shelf of dolphin things. So you would have loved this little toy that we had. Darian had specifically, but it was a, like a magnet that mm-hmm. spun really quick, and it went on like this wire up and down it. But it was a dolphin. That was it was a dolphin. Around. I would have loved it. Oh, I would have yeah, collected it. Yeah, it was just it was just one of those like spinny toys that was on like one of the loop, and you just spin it back and forth, and it looked like the dolphin doing 
Doing circles. Yeah, I did have that. Oh, doing circles. Uh, yes, because this is GJ also outing me as also, yeah, I was a dolphin girl. <gasps> you were also a dolphin girl? I cared not oh for gosh. the horses. I think I had a dolphin lamp. Like, I'm, I'm vividly yeah. remembering a dolphin lamp. I had a dolphin uh, lamp. So that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, the dolphin lamp. That was lamp. like the yeah. lamps with the little things on them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think if you were a dolphin girl, you have seriously considered in your life becoming a professional mermaid. Like you've looked mm-hmm. at the women who have done mm-hmm. it and you just kind of wish you had that kind of courage. Yeah. Like you would probably still play mermaids in the pool if someone mm-hmm. encouraged if someone it. asked. Mm-hmm. If someone asked. You might be the one asking, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, it would be so funny. Anyway, so my name is definitely Pearl. I, uh, my, my tail, tail is, is pink. Trans- my tail is pink. Yep, mm-hmm. with just little flecks of amethyst. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't That's have slight one. jewel tones in your aesthetic, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. But we are not here to talk about the sea today. Unfortunately, we are here to talk about the land. Yes, and Demeter. And I'm excited to do Demeter because no. I mm-hmm. also I have a fun fact on Demeter oh when. God, well, it's about myself. It's not I'm like yeah, I'm no, no, talk no. About I myself. I figured it was gonna be. That's why I got excited. <laughs> I have a deep personal connection. No, um, in <laughs> sixth grade, we had to do like an ancient civilizations thing where like we mm-hmm. all got split into four civilizations, and it, it's interesting the ones they pick. It was like Mayan, Egyptian, Greek, and Roman, and I was in the Roman section. Okay. Everyone wanted Greek because of Percy Jackson, of course. I got Roman. Um, and we all, for like our final thing, we had to dress up as a as a god or a, a figure from that mythology or from that civilization. And uh-huh. I was the Roman version of Demeter, Ceres. It wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be Athena and or Aphrodite, but uh-huh. I I got one of the like last women that was left, uh, which Aww. was Demeter. Which is kind of sad for Demeter because I also oh. she's cool. Mm-hmm. She's oh, she's so- very cool. I was trying to do research on like where her in pop culture and there's so little mm-hmm. and she's always mm-hmm. just like I mean we'll she's probably talk ever, about like, this referenced really she, like her, like, yeah. her name is used but it's not mm-hmm. and when she's around there is a very specific character class that mm-hmm. she's put into that we will discuss yeah yeah but y'all I'm gonna go off on Rick Riordan in this episode <laughs> just I'm excited right out the gate all right hey DJ what do, you, what do you know about Demeter from the Percy Jackson books? Oh, and Aaron has actually read them all, so we don't have to worry about accidentally spoiling anything. <laughs> I have read everything. If I'm yes. being yep. entirely honest, I only remember her just kind of bitching at Hades for a little bit. <laughs> Saying, like, yeah. you should be somewhere else with these other people because they could keep us safe. Yeah. And Hades like, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. God, your mother <laughs> your is insane, so Persephone. <laughs> Just, yeah, just mother-in-law things. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe my notes call her in, in specifically in describing her role in the Percy Jackson lore. Overbearing, judgy mother-in-law only talks about cereal. Mm-hmm. Just, just a classic. Just no mill, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid to ask what. Just no mother-in-law. It's a Reddit thing. It's a oh. subreddit of like people who have problems with their mother mother-in-laws. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's Hades posting on it on the regular. It's like, God. Yeah, he's a mod. Yeah, <laughs> he's a mod. <laughs> yeah it is. That's kind of it <laughs> for Demeter. She shows up again briefly at the end of the Trials of Apollo series when Apollo is back among the gods and they're all talking about everything. Oh, yeah, they're talking about her yeah. daughter. Yeah, well, she makes some comment about like, oh, yeah, I vote something for Apollo. And if anyone ever needs a servant, like he works great with my daughter. And Apollo's just like, well, Meg, I'm sorry your mom is your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's disappointing. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, like- too, that like. In PJO, the angle is she's like this really overbearing mom, but then she really doesn't have any any mm-hmm. influence on Meg's life in Trials of Apollo, which I guess like well, Persephone's a god. About her half blood children. Yeah, 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 she yeah, only yeah, yeah. Cares about she's, yeah, like mm-hmm. every other god doesn't actually care about the half blood children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like 
at least Percy sees Poseidon. And at least, like, and honestly, I think he Hades genuinely cares about Nico. Like, uh, Hades, for real, Hades of all does of them, care about Nico. I actually would argue that I think yeah. Hades is the only one who genuinely, in a true yes. parental way, cares about Nico. Or can and he get he a also, zombie chauffeur? <laughs> he would probably also care about Hazel in the same way if he could actually spend any time with her, mm-hmm. but he has to just Absolutely. pretend she doesn't exist. 100%. I, I will agree with that. Mm-hmm. I would argue Poseidon gets, like, dad of the year for a uh, brace yourself note. <gasps> when he yeah. left that, you know, like that was, he was the really bare, doing so much work. He decided just really cares. Bare minimum dad's a patron the god, only doesn't he? Percy actually does get to see Poseidon is because Percy is exceptional. Yeah. Er, yeah. And Poseidon needs Meg something from him. Not to say mm-hmm. Meg isn't, but like Percy is truly exceptional among exceptionals, you know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. This is true. And there's also like all these prophecies thrown left and right at Percy specifically, oh, wherein the boy. fate of said prophecy will impact the gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And while Meg is also running around fulfilling prophecies, if Nero had succeeded, it wouldn't have actually impacted the gods. They would no. still be the gods. Nick Nero would also just now be a god. Mm-hmm. And Apollo would have been screwed over. A- yeah, it only yeah, impacts Apollo. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it it is it does such kind of affect the a... gods because it affects the fates. He had control over fate for a great deal of time. Yeah, that's true too. It, I think Zeus and the other gods kind of brushed off how bad it would have actually been for them, or maybe they genuinely like don't believe it would have mattered because like Demeter doesn't even like. I we know we never have it from Meg's point of view, and maybe that's why. But I. And and the gods aren't allowed to interfere with Apollo, and maybe that's like justification. But it, I don't know, like a dream, an omen, something, a gift, something. Not even mm-hmm. the weapons that Meg uses aren't even from Demeter. They're from Nero, and they just have Demeter's symbol on them. Yeah, and that is also a bummer. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and yeah, all of them are hands off. But I feel like it's a, it's just specifically a because every other kid has like every other protagonist in these books gets to meet their parent mm-hmm. except for hazel although she did meet pluto that one time before she died so actually every single one of them except for meg doesn't she actually meet him another time at the very I, end of the series and it might have been a dream but it might not have she oh they you know what hades does work with her in fighting the giants but he stays underground while doing so I think he just needs that plausible deniability of like yeah. Hazel. No, she's dead. Yeah, no, she's mm-hmm. definitely still in the field. As far as I'm aware, she's as far not as again. I'm, the last time I saw her, fields. <laughs> well, you know? fields. Yeah. Are they ash? Are they in fire? Are they flowers? Who knows? Fields. But that's. I will save my screaming for why I really hate. I hate a lot of the way Rick Riordan has presented the goddesses, mm. mm-hmm. but Demeter feels like a very specific kind of insult. Yeah. I mean, I think, too, because she is a fertility goddess. She's a mother mm-hmm. goddess, which are, you know, parts of femininity that are often trashed off the most. Mm-hmm. Like, people often try to get away from those parts of femininity, and mm-hmm. it's sad sad yes yeah and it's like a a response to the like centuries wherein women were told that is the only thing you can embody this is the only proper feminine and that sucks and is bad also Mm -hmm. but trashing on those elements of femininity and women who choose to embrace them is also not okay don't do that Mm -hmm. yeah we respect mothers here yeah yeah i think that's it and it's also how Hera, Hestia, and Demeter, despite being also the original three, like three of six Olympians and these first like Olympian goddesses are so cast aside in this world Rick Riordan established where the big three are Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. And so even when we have Demeter's children, they're just so like Meg is powerful and that's shocking. Mm Mm-hmm. The fact, and it's like, oh, but she can do all these like cool Demeter things that you would think that every kid of Demeter would be able to do because that just feels normal. But she's treated as she is special and unique and extra powerful. 
but every single You'd one of them should Thalia be. You'd to be able to fly, but you can't. That's not yeah. the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> what do you mean it's not the same thing? <laughs> because she can still call down lightning. And I also think Thalia can't fly because she's never tried because she's afraid of heights. I mean. Yeah, that's a good argument. Yeah. We'll get more in the Hunter's book. I'm sure she'll How have do you to know fly that none to save Rada at some point. people tried to travel through the grass. We don't, but the way Apollo frames it is that the, the fact that she can tra- yeah. shadow travel through grass and has that, that is scary such an peach insane boy power. It's that so she can good. Travel through the roots yeah. of of like plants is an insane thing to be That's like. So, oh yeah, like, she could do this now. <laughs> like, Percy can control water. Like. I know. A typhoon. Yeah, granted. Yeah, these but element like, things are so. insane. Again, mm-hmm. I stand by the only one with powers that makes that is not actually insane. Nico being able to kill people with a touch. That actually is the only thing that I'm like, yeah, that feels reasonable. It's, like, it's <laughs> death, you know? <laughs> it's death, it's life, it's souls, it's things that humanity is inherently like connected to. Percy controls the water, and Meg can like fast travel through roots. Percy Ugh. controls specifically H2O, and if anything is yeah. added onto that, he still has power over it. It's Percy, tricky. a bloodbender. Uh-huh. Have, they have not touched it yet, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's, listen, it's the misogyny of it. I'm just going to say yeah. what it is. And I'm not saying that Rick wrote this on purpose, but I am saying he was following a tradition, and mm-hmm. that's unfortunate. A tradition that he insisted on maintaining, even in Trials of Apollo, when he was doing so much legwork to try to, like, retcon and, like, demonstrate his growth as a storyteller and, like, a person who's a part of this, like, Western civilization tradition and, like, d- drawing away from that. And Demeter is still... Wow, I'm sorry your mom is your mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate because it's very much, I forget what wave of feminism it is, is second or third, I don't know. But it's like, I used to know this stuff. One of the waves of feminism is very much like in response to, you know, women being like, we don't want to wear heels anymore. We don't want to wear makeup. We don't want to wear bras, which is all really great. And distancing themselves from those traditional roles of mother and from... I don't know, housemaker, whatever the hell was put on women. But it became like in a way of shaming women who are still, who are choosing to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what this feels like a product of, of being like, oh, she's just the silly little mother-in-law goddess who Mm -hmm. is like, none of her things are really consequential when it's like, no, to be feminism is to, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) to embrace everything. Give her kids ice powers, damn it. Oh, that'd oh be my so god, cool. give her kids ice powers. <gasps> Fuck. Oh. She, oh, crazy. What she a good idea. The kid during oh, winter. Like, so they get cool. ice powers. Hey, crazy. <laughs> you know? DJ, that's so good. That would be so wow. cool. That's like Elsa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So let's get into why we're pissed off about the way that Demeter is so, like, Dismissed you guys in the are off. I have like actually no feelings to her. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> DJ you just said, DJ, you just said give her said, ice powers. If maybe I not pissed off, cool. but like, but don't, but you, but maybe not pissed I think off. It but could maybe be you, used more. Could, there we go. Maybe you, maybe yeah. you could also. Your space is <laughs> acknowledging the, that yeah, yeah, there's some a, potential that we're just not tapping into. Potential that's on the floor. You know, yeah. you need to pick it up and use. We've it, just pushed all of her on the floor. Rick just pushed her to the floor. (laughs) Well, that's just you as a person. It absolutely. (laughs) That's that's how you consume media. This is not a. a, This is most less not no. Unless it's like cooking based media, which is absolutely insane. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I when I said that, I does not mean saying that DJ does not care. DJ cares Mm. so deeply and so intently about things that matter to him. Media just is often not one of those things, which is wild that we do this podcast. That is wild. Three three years. Three years I now. feel like that's a good perspective to have, though. It, Someone who's just chilling. It really yeah. helps keep me grounded because I will fly off the handle every every week. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, Aaron, do you have anything about Demeter and mythology that you want us to just sink our claws into right out the gate? I've got a whole thing of notes. That's really just in case I wanted to reference something and not forget it. We don't have to follow that at all. We can do whatever here, we want here. Notes sound great. I was trying to find like, cause she's so much, she's the goddess of a lot of different things, which I was mm-hmm. reading about. And I remember knowing that at some point in my life, but she's mostly portrayed as the grain goddess in this, but it's like, mm-hmm. like, like uh, you were mentioning she could be winter, which would be really That's cool. But also I'm like birth and 
health and mm -hmm. I'm marriage. Nah, that one's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Nah, it kind hit of or miss, hit or miss. But birth, <laughs> that's so yeah. cool. It's really like, important. Where are the midwives of the Demeter cabin? Where are like, the midwives? I mean, yeah, probably not anywhere because no one has don't. sex in Rick Riordan and yeah. And they don't live long enough to become adults they with don't jobs. Live so long I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Sally fucks, okay? <laughs> Sally does fuck. We have a theory well, that, that Sally a, Sally's novels have got to be like trashy romance novels about Poseidon. That is our theory. Oh, that is she, so and that is why she makes bank. She's writing Poseidon. like, yeah, she's making like oh, the, the, the Bridgerton wife. with like, but with Poseidon and they're real stories, you know, and she's just mm -hmm. making bank. And Percy's oblivious. He has no idea what no, she's writing. He's never read. Like, he, he, just he goes to her launch her. parties and he's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. It's not that he doesn't want to read it. It's that he cannot focus long enough to do so. Exactly. And they're not in ancient yeah. Greek. Yeah. Uh, Mom, but I'm, you got any audiobooks? I, not for these ones, kid. <laughs> no, not you. Sorry. And he's like, no, she's like, no, those would book. be rated 18. No, yeah. no, I yeah. have. No, no, I don't think we do. Even though she definitely yeah. does. And they're in multiple mm. languages. Yeah. yeah. She just doesn't uh, want him to read it. <laughs> can I put forth that? I definitely, definitely agree. Trashy romance book. And the main character is like Poseidon. And you're having like Greek God stuff. But is Poseidon, mm. if he was modeled after Paul Blofus, the most like mm. stable, supportive <laughs> guy. So if Poseidon yeah. read it, he yeah. would be really but confused because he's. Uh, because you, in addition to like hot steamy romance, romance women novels, no I, women easy. also want someone that, who they can rely on, and you I cannot rely on Poseidon. That, but like, let's take but a look. That's at, what that's know, what makes her Fabio, work so great. Do you think Fabio, the guy modeled after everything, is going to be like in those books specifically is stable, or is the it reason, just a fun romance but the, fling? But the reason that her books stand above just the mm. traditional genre is that she's able to incorporate both. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know and that's Maybe. why she's writing a second book because you don't get a sequel if the guy runs off at the end. How do we I mean, you can, and now she's hooking. Okay, uh, well, I guess it's not. It's just her second book, isn't it? I think. Yeah, they might just. Say I think so. Book. Yeah. Regardless. So it could just so, be more trash. Another trashy romance novel. Good for her, novel. though. Good for her, <laughs> though. I love that. I love that so much. So yeah, we said so. Primarily, Demeter is like this, like, her, like not her, that's Hestia, the uh, like harvest and the agriculture. And that's like mm -hmm. the big primary. Almost all of her epitaphs had something to do with grain and harvest. Because that's what's important. You're in an agrarian society. DJ, what do we like here in Idaho? Agriculture. <laughs> we love agriculture. All the, all the crops are so cheap. You get a five pound bag of potatoes for two bucks, man. It is the greatest. That thing sounds great. On the it's great. It's we so have good. potatoes. We have corn. It's excellent. Agriculture. Mm. We border Idaho, and potatoes are not two dollars. Like uh, five pounds is oh. not two dollars. Mm. Mm. Believe me, it is inflation. The best. <laughs> inflation. We sneak across Damn the border. Damn travel to costs. <laughs> Idaho yeah. exports every potato in the world. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> they have a monopoly on potatoes. But you know what? It could be. <laughs> but as you said, Erin, she's also the goddess of other things, including sacred law, which is like ethics and morality, and the natural so cool. cycle of life and death. Yes, there are like these really esoteric concepts that Demeter is also a part of. Uh, before we get too far on that track, though, I did forget one second. So she's worshipped as the grain mother. And she's connected to, like, all fruits and vegetation, except for beans. Oh. Beans, because dude. In Who's Athens, connected to was... beans? Is there a yeah, bean so god? There's, yeah, there's this guy from Athens who was worshipped there named uh, Siamides. And his name means the god of beans and the patron of the <laughs> bean market. Ooh, I, I don't someone know. someone to be like, I'm a child of the god of beans. <laughs> dude. Uh, I'm shocked Rick hasn't yet because that would be funny. Does doesn't that sound like it's in a Rick Riordan book already? It does. There's like the one kid who's just always eating beans, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people are trying to like give him like green beans or something, and he or like so he's really pissed mm -hmm. off. People don't understand the difference between a bean and a like a leg legume a legume legume. Yeah, legume. legume. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's not the goddess of beans. Okay. It's mm -hmm. where she draws the line. She has boundaries. That's where she, someone else is in charge of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Demeter, I think when you think of Demeter, like especially now and how she's used in pop culture, her as the mother of Persephone is like mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind often. And I and that's very fair, especially because her the second part of her name literally means mother. 
<laughs> the first part of her name is up Damn. for debate, etymologically mm. speaking. There are some scholars, even from like antiquity, scholars were like, what does this mean exactly? And some scholars were like, oh, well, this, the D-E-D-A uh, actually means like Earth. And so she is Mother Earth. Another ones were like, no, 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 absolutely not. This Her name is like more associated with like grain and stuff. So she's like mother of, of like grain. She's grain mother. Mm. And then even more like one theory examining like the proto-Indo-European language is like, no, 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 no. This word meant house. So she is like mother of the house. Come to find out it's literally just like de is the. So it's the, the mother. It's and the honestly, mother. the mother would actually be really intense. Like having this <laughs> goddess who is the mother goddess like the great mother yeah that's would be equally as like very like a powerful figure culturally but i want to know where she was in all of heroes of olympus because gaia's whole thing is earth mother also why didn't demeter like step up and have it out with gaia grain mother in this one Mm. that's true (laughs) she's like i only (laughs) deal with grain i won't touch anything else farming yeah yeah Yeah. but but no aaron that's like a super good observation not good observation (laughs) (laughs) thank you that's she in heroes no but like in regards to gaia because there are often a lot of like like records and examinations of like cultural practices from antiquity that suggests that she and Gaia were deeply connected. And as like Mm. she and Rhea too, Mm. in this like, like earth goddess, the mother goddess (laughs) archetype was something that like Gaia, Rhea and Demeter all represented Mm. very heavily in these like ancient, like cult mysteries of worship. Mm -hmm. They are all the big mommies. The big no, I'm not gonna. No one's gonna say I'm not be saying that. Absolutely not. <laughs> and it's at first I was a little worried that I'm like, oh no, I don't want this episode just to be like the taking of Persephone because we got to mm-hmm. save that for our Persephone episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I Which do I assume is next, right? Yes. <laughs> Theoretically, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I do want to like talk about that because it is important to like Demeter's like cultural perception and like her the worship traditions around her Mm -hmm. because having your daughter kidnapped by your brother and then finding out your other brother and your daughter's father okayed that Mm -hmm. that's a lot to deal with (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so Demeter when Persephone was was taken she like searched the world trying to find her they say like nine days in some sources, but like searched and searched and couldn't find her until Hecate came to her and is like, I don't know what happened, but I heard her screaming when she was taken and I want to help mm-hmm. you. And I think that's also cool that like the mother goddess and then like Hecate as like this triple goddess figure and goddess of like magic and other like mm-hmm. feminine mysteries work together to try to find the daughter. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like there's a lot of like really good symbolism there that I'm into. And so mm-hmm. they go to Helios, and Helios is like, oh, yeah, I saw what happened. Like, Hades took her, and Zeus said it was okay. And Demeter's so pissed, he just no longer allows things to grow. That's it. No more growing. Don't blame her. <laughs> and that's kind of incredible. For in, she had, like, no power in that situation to get her daughter back. She was not consulted on having her daughter married off. And she just was essentially, by the actions of Hades and Zeus, told she was not important. Mm-hmm. And she said, I'm the grain mother for a reason, bitches. Mm-hmm. And so when everything is dying, Zeus is like, okay, uh, Hermes, why don't you go pick up Persephone? Mm-hmm. And we'll get into what happens after that fact later. But I, I just think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. That story of a, a woman like Demeter with like no, essentially in the version of the story we have, who's framed as no power, reminding the men around her that I do in fact have power that Mm -hmm. you can't take away from me and you can't control. Yeah. I feel like I've always had a soft spot for like the Demeter perspective of that story because I remember when I did my little ancient civilization thing, like I have such a vivid memory of like sitting at my like, you know, the computer, the big computer in my parents' 
uh, like office room and like mm-hmm. googling or whatever. I think AOL kids searching uh, ah! what I know this myth, and I remember reading like about the story of her searching for her daughter everywhere and teaming up with Hakati, and I just like ever. I feel like because that was my first exposure to Demeter outside of Percy Jackson. I was reading mm-hmm. Percy Jackson probably around the same time. Um, I doubt the fifth book was out by then, so she hadn't really showed up. Mm-hmm. And now, like, when when I see all these modern interpretations of, like, like Persephone and Hades being in love, I've, in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, they stole her. Because like, yeah, that no, was the first wrong. version I read. I'm like, it's yeah. wrong. People are like, it's hot. And I'm like, no. <laughs> they kidnapped her. <laughs> like, we're completely, yeah. No, it's, it's. The, this taking of Persephone, I think, is a very fun balancing mm-hmm. act, especially for our podcast, where our like thesis is all these ad- all these adaptations have value, yeah, and are are uh, valid in the right, and also serve to keep that story alive. Mm-hmm. Because in telling like Lore Olympus or mm-hmm. or Ponder World or something like that, you're not in fact erasing the hymn to mm-hmm. Demeter where that story is from. In fact, you're just actually amplifying it more because folks who love this story will want to know more about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it is. Oh uh, no, pin a minute. We gotta save it to the end. Save it to the. End. Well, do we want to talk about how Demeter's constantly like the biggest helicopter mom you've ever seen? Yeah, that's her biggest <laughs> myth. It makes sense. Yeah, but it's it sucks. It it does well. It kind of sucks. It's, it's. I think less of an interpretation of Demeter in the myth than it is an exploration of a storyteller's own relationship with their parents and the culture Ooh. of. Mm-hmm. This is not me saying everyone who writes a like taking a Persephone adaptation in which Demeter is the most controlling helicopter parent you ever did see had that kind of relationship with their mother. But it is in, like, Lore Olympus and, as I mentioned, Punderworld and Girl Goddess Queen, which are all Mm -hmm. excellent. And in each of them, Persephone is unique and Mm -hmm. has her own motivations. And the Hades is a different kind of character. But in all three, like, Demeter is this way. She is very controlling of Persephone and some degree dismissive of her own abilities and hyper overprotective and and afraid of the world and what it'll do to her daughter. And that's not necessarily in the the hymn. Mm -hmm. What you have in the hymn is a mother who has a daughter and they are out picking flowers in the field and Persephone is with her friends and she is taken and the mother searches the world to try to find her. And when she discovers where she at and that she can't go and save her, she will tear the world apart. And I, I do wonder because you can't have that and also have Hades and Persephone be hashtag relationship goals. Yeah. Mm hmm. You have to kind of change, edit that story and add more. Mm hmm toxicity between Demeter and Persephone for that to be for you to root for Persephone and Hades to be together yeah it's like they had to in order to get the toxicity that was in like the Hades and Persephone Mm -hmm. relationship it got transferred into the Persephone and Demeter relationship which is kind of sad especially where in like hate a Persephone and Demeter together were a very important like cultural figures Mm -hmm. in in ancient Greece the together they represent like when they appeared together they represented the duality of fertility and death Mm. and Demeter and Persephone were the central focus of one of the most widely celebrated festivals of ancient Greece. Mm-hmm. So this festival was called Desmosphoria. And it was it's a festival to Demeter and Persephone that essentially like promoted fertility in both agriculture and humanity. Because both are very important when you're in ancient agrarian society. Mm-hmm. So this was like this was like I said, the most widely celebrated festival throughout Greece. And I say that it means like literally widespread to the point where it is believed that it probably originated before the time of like the earliest Greek settlements from like the 11th century BCE. Because that's the only way you'd have this kernel be so widespread if it has to be so old that all of these cultures are are celebrating it, even though it was like highly secretive and was only attended by adult women. 
Oh. Yeah. Men were not allowed to attend and they were not allowed to know anything that went on in the festival. Like there's I wanna no... go. I wanna go. <laughs> we should we should bring that back. We should bring that, that back. That sounds so, fun. <laughs> so it um we don't know basically like and it's also unclear whether or not like did all adult women attend or was it mm. only like married women or freed women? Oh. Like who because the records of it were just you didn't get to record it because it mm-hmm. was so secretive and it was only continued by women who had celebrated before, bringing women who were coming for the first time and teaching them how it was done. Mm-hmm. So the only way, like the the only sources we have of this is a quote comment in the in a Scalarian on Lucian, and Lucian was like the guy who made the comment, but he was also a satirist. And then there was Astrophanes play called Thesmorphia Azusea, which parodies the festival and also very clearly like in the play incorporated elements of a Dionysus festival because that would have been the festival that the playwright would have actually been able to attend. Mm -hmm. And so they were just like, well, I know this thing, so let's parody it. And then I'm going to make it mostly like the festival I know because I can't go to this festival. Neither of those would have be considered like the most rigorous records to accurately like reflect what it was but essentially it was a three-day long festival and it included sacrifices to pigs which are some to some scholars considered an example of like ancient greek agrarian magic which i love that phrase so very much (laughs) fasting to commemorate demeter mourning her daughter being taken prayers for fertility and then also celebrating Persephone's ascent from the underworld. So this mm. festival had it all. Like, it was a whole cycle of, like, human emotion and experience. And again, a super big deal for a really long time. And Persephone and Demeter were also a really important part of a, like, long-lived mystery cult. The Eleusinia Mysteries. Mm. And... It was like maybe considered derived from like Mycenaean religious practices. Like that's how old this is. And it continued through Rome, like even after the first like the Roman uh, emperors converted to Christianity and outlawed it. Like pastoral farmers in the countryside would continue to like practice a lot of these traditions because agrarian and importance and yeah, it's it all just circles back to the simple fact that Demeter was incredibly deeply important and influential mm-hmm. and that her relationship to her daughter Persephone was also very important and and sacred and valued. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's not me saying the stories that are like the taking of Persephone but retold in a way that Hades and Persephone are hashtag relationship goals are bad. Absolutely not. We will be covering the latest Laura Olympus thing. I am once again doing the <laughs> review rally. You leave us a, a happy review, take a screenshot, send it to our Gmail, and we will put you in a raffle to win a copy of Girl Goddess Queen. I will send it nice. to you. Yes, like it's a good book. It's actually not available in North America right now. So I had to oh. order mine <laughs> internationally to get it. And it's It's good. Like, this story is good. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot. I imagine folks feel a lot of familiar, like, resonate with when Persephone and Demeter's relationship is more of a controlling parent who's Mm -hmm. trying to do what is best for their child, but Mm -hmm. in a way that is stifling to the child's own independence. I'm sure people find that very familiar. I know Mm -hmm. I do. It's interesting because that's, like, so common in most of the, like, modern retellings of or tellings versions of this is like Mm -hmm. Demeter is usually portrayed as a controlling uh, mother-in-law or controlling mother and Mm so I I liked your point what you said earlier about how like it being is it really in the myth or is it so much like a reflection of the of the storyteller or the Mm -hmm. author but like it's such a common narrative too I'm just like feel like it's all like societal stuff like why women mothers are often told like the mother-daughter relationship is always really different than the mother-son relationship and obviously Mm -hmm. there's more than just two genders but um that's just speaking in like that in those terms but like the way mothers are to their daughters tends to be more controlling Mm -hmm. than they are to their sons which not always like there are many different 
different family uh, circumstances. Yeah. But that's like the narratives that we see in in television mm-hmm. often in books, and they're coming from somewhere. But it's like yeah, women are often socialized to view their children, especially their daughters, as like an extension of themselves that they have yeah. to control, which is like ugh. Mm-hmm. Which is what, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I definitely have had my own mother say, oh, let me live vicariously through you mm. more than once in my life. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. no. And I don't that's think not, you, yeah. yeah. It's not why you have children if you choose to have children. It's not to like create another version of yourself. Yeah. yeah that's, <sighs> but a lot, I, for a lot of people, maybe it is, maybe which is the is. problem. <laughs> yeah. I think there are also definitely times where it's like, oh, there the disconnect comes from, I'm like, I'm not another version of you. And mm. that, upsets you or you're projecting mm. that a uh, things you went through onto me that I don't have. Mm-hmm. And that could probably bleed into when adapting like hey cuz I think for a lot of the storytellers it's not about Hades, it's not about Demeter, it's actually about Persephone and viewing mm-hmm. the underworld as an opportunity for her to find independence and strength and power, which we will definitely get into more in our Persephone episode. But in order to create the underworld as a desirable place for Persephone to be, it must mean Hades cannot be an enemy. Which means, how do you justify her not going back to Demeter? And how does it balance that that story of really what it comes to is like why the seasons change? Except I saw some stuff that was like, maybe it's actually not about that at all, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> that it's like, maybe it's actually not about winter, but it's just about the dry season. Like in the middle of summer, mm. when things don't grow as well because there's not enough water. But cycles and things, it, it is it is a myth that explains at least the cycle and rhythm of nature and Demeter's like mm-hmm. intrinsic part of that and how you want to place it, like placate this goddess. Because if nothing grows, everyone dies. Mm. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it is I think I'm just gonna hold Rick Riordan into the fire on this one because I like the other ones that focus on the taking of Persephone and I think those are cool stories but Rick's over here just doing Greek mythology and Demeter's over here being like cereal and I'm like mm, I see <laughs> to be fair her Roman name is Ceres <laughs> yes it's but she, yeah. but also that was another <laughs> goddess that got blended with her that's not even her you're right. you're right but it's still like agricultural series most cereal is made from a grain of sorts yeah. she's the grain mother it's i will say i thought it was funny where you're coming from yeah. it's, it's it, listen it's not it's not cereal funny. No, no, when I was did it too. Also, they got the barley mother. Shit. Yeah, but she has an empire. Yeah. She has a business empire, <laughs> and she wanted to roll up and become queen of the earth. And she petitioned nice. to be get to be the mother earth goddess. And Hades Definitely. fucked her over. So, mm-hmm. yeah, my guy. Sorry, Aaron. What were you saying? <laughs> oh, I was. I think it's funny. Like I'm like the yeah. the critical thoughts I have about the way it's portrayed. I hold also at the same time with the fact that when I read, pe- like when I read that book, every time I've read the fifth, the last Olympian, I'm just kind of like, huh, she loves cereal. Like, it's just kind of funny each <laughs> it's time not, I read it. It's not funny. And <laughs> yeah. I also sometimes wish, wish Rick Riordan had like doubled down and that she's just straight up like pouring bowls of like <laughs> Kellogg's Frosted Flakes and... <laughs> Cheerios for heart health, and like Nico's out here getting Wheaties. God showing up to a meeting, being like, "Guess we know who picked the menu for this one," and it's just bowls of like different cereal. It's like a, uh, it's like a morning breakfast buffet at a Holiday Inn. It's just yeah, but it's just cereal. Like there's not even a waffle. waffle. There's yeah, everything's no, wheat. No gluten-free options. No, no of course nope. not. No. I bet you she hates oh. the gluten-free like movement. I, like, I can't believe mm-hmm. that oh. these people are rejecting my gifts. I can and and Persephone's over here that's yeah. like, I actually think I might have a gluten tolerance. <laughs> when I eat whole wheat, it does upset my stomach. Um, but I can't tell my mother that. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell my mother that. <laughs> Good thing Hades is like... Uh, really accepting about this shit and yeah no Demeter's coming for dinner he sees her putting bread out babe what are you doing you're you're gluten intolerant it doesn't matter mom's coming mom's coming <laughs> mom's coming you serve I'll, the bread i can get through it i will one be night. fine it's fine yeah. it's not an allergy it's just an irritation <laughs> and he's like babe no 
<laughs> that's what an allergy is like but you know we are casting demeter as the controlling like like unwavering mother who's not willing to like make amends for her own the daughter she chooses to live outside of her though. we did that's just true. talk about that didn't we <laughs> like just every in, god just sucks general. the only yes, god that we've seen change in this is apollo and that was when he mm-hmm. was human and made another yeah. story for himself yeah, mm-hmm. that was the point of Trials of Apollo. It's almost <laughs> as if the gods didn't change. And also, we need to overthrow Zeus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. <sighs> okay, hold on. I this is I've this isn't so fun. We usually don't like blend in talking about the pop culture stuff until yeah. later, but this has been very oh, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I think it's just been I think that's really good. Yeah, I've I've liked this a lot, and maybe we need to consider like doing it like doing this? that more often yeah i think that was really yeah. handy and we can like circle back but this last handful of episodes we've done there have been not not Almost a lot nothing. to work with yeah i mean there's been a lot like culturally to mm-hmm. work with like but not a lot of stories and that's not the case for demeter we talk about the taking of persephone a lot because that one is mm-hmm. so major in like the traditions obviously persephone and demeter and their festivals and the, like the mystery cults it's, are important it's the one but, that like explains today the seasons like yeah. that is always going to be one of the biggest myths in any culture mm-hmm. so with demeter she's also got like just a lot of it like demeter just just did a lot of stuff mm-hmm. and it's great <laughs> and i she's the god that they're like okay uh, mm-hmm. i don't know who to put for this part Demeter, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like she she was uh active and I just I just want to talk about it. Like like one time. And this we get this from the the Odyssey. Uh when Calypso is pissed off that the gods are making her give back Odysseus, and she's like the gods do this shit all the time. Like whenever a goddess finds a mortal lover she likes, they're like no no no, you can't have her cuz the story she tells is Demeter who romanced a who took a mortal lover the hero Aeseon and while Ovid the hack claimed that Aeseon became Demeter's husband and lived to a ripe old age Homer was like no actually what happened is Zeus got pissed that a goddess would be with a mortal man and killed him with a lightning bolt Mm. I like Ovid's version a little more this time around Mm. it is nicer Hesiod later claimed that from this union, Demeter gave birth to a uh, poultice, who was the godly personification of wealth, hmm. which I'd like to think indicates how much she actually loved that guy if her son was literally the god of wealth. I mean, for that time, it does make sense that wealth would spring from like a, a like a, a well-found farmer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yep. Food was wealth back then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the money's in the grain. Mm-hmm. Truly was. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, there was another time when Demeter was searching for Persephone that, or sometimes the story takes place after the fact when she can't get Persephone back and she's stuck in the underworld for X amount of time. In her uh, mourning and her grief, she goes to like uh, the mortal, a mortal kingdom. Which one was it? Crete, uh, the palace of Celius, and she disguises as an old woman and she 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 seeks shelter there. And the king welcomes her warmly and brings her in to be a nurse to his two young sons. And Demeter is so, like, grateful that she decides to reward the king by making one of the sons immortal, which she does through a process of feeding him amber, not amber, ambrosia, and then putting him in the fireplace Mm. over a series of nights. The last evening she was doing this, the mother comes in, sees what's happening, is very upset by all of this. And pulls her baby out of the fire, and Demeter's like, if you had left him there, he would be immortal, but now he will die as a mortal man, and she just takes off. <laughs> and I'm like, Demeter, Demeter, you of all people maybe should understand the importance of letting a mother know what's going on with their child. She hasn't had Persephone yet. Don't worry No, she it. has. <laughs> oh, I oh. Well, this yeah. mystery, this no excuse. This specifically <laughs> takes place. Uh, uh. Maybe, I mean, granted, you know what, DJ? Your retelling is just as valid and maybe makes a little more sense. <laughs> but that actually uh, is exactly the earliest version of the way Theseus, not Theseus, Thetis was make, trying to make Achilles immortal, giving in ambrosia and putting him in a fireplace. Apparently it's tried and tested. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knows about it. They're mm-hmm. just too scared to do it. So you're telling <laughs> just, people it's, it's, to put it's their like babies the in the fire. It's like Bloody Mary shit as a kid. If you know? you're like, a goddess, everybody knows about it. You just don't. Not want to just, do it. not just. No, no, no. You have to be a goddess. And hey, everybody you're working with Hestia. 
Your baby's in the fire. No. <laughs> just, no, don't don't sound like that. <laughs> Feed him godly muffins, then just toss him in there. Feed him <laughs> godly, godly muffins. muffins. Okay. <laughs> now, every time we say ambrosia, I want you to picture godly muffins, dear listener. I think of like a weird blue crumble cake of sorts. So godly muffin. Mm. I don't picture anything, but that's just as like good. A, like, yeah. Really? No. no I'm, I guess maybe like a blue cornbread, but like if you oh. add blue dyed to cornbread. It's blue. Right? I don't know. It's like, well, blue dyed to cornbread, whatever color mm. that comes up. That's the kind I of. I picture like, like a little thing. shortbread cracker. It's like you got to break it off in my mind. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, they do say I break off a piece of cornbread oh. in the book, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I guess I pictured more of a, a piece chocolate. Of ambrosia, not cornbread. <laughs> a piece of cornbread. <laughs> they could. Percy Jackson just wrapping up like loaves of cornbread <laughs> on the way to the next quest. God damn it. I got another one. And this is another example of Demeter's wrath. And it's mm. excellent. Let me tell you about this one, y'all. Oh, I had to just, I only picked like my favorite few. There's a lot of good ones. Uh, she helps Psyche during the Eros and Psyche story. She, at one point in time, uh, Poseidon gets pissed off because there's a tribe of people worshiping her more than him. So he floods them. It's a whole thing. But so, so there's this king, right? And his name is Erisistheon, which thanks, man. Of course, you have the worst name. So the king. <laughs> and he got really into like home remodeling, like HGVT, HGTV <laughs> was this man's jam. And he's like, I am going to add an expansion onto my palace just straight into the sacred grove to Demeter. So he orders his men to cut down all of these trees. And they do so, except for this one massive ancient oak that has like woven the limbs into like shapes that are sacred to Demeter. And they're like, we're not touching that one. And the king's like, I'll do it myself. So he cuts down this tree, killing Mm -hmm. a dryad in the process. Uh Uh-oh. And in her dying breath, she curses him. And Demeter said, yes, I will gladly do that for you, my dear. And so she goes, let me find this. Okay. So she calls upon Limos, the spirit of unrelenting and insatiable hunger, to enter this man's stomach. And the more he ate, the hungrier he became. He eventually sells all of his possessions to buy food, but he is not able to sate his hunger. Eventually, he sells his own daughter into slavery to buy more food to eat. Now, this girl, Mestra, now she's actually saved by Poseidon, who was one of her former lovers. So a shockingly cool thing Poseidon did at one time. In addition to saving her, and he didn't just save her by turning her into like a sea urchin or something and dropping her to the bottom of the sea. He actually saves her by giving her the power into shapeshift into any creature in order to escape whatever bonds she may find herself in. And so she goes back to her dad who just uses her ability to keep selling her over and over again as different creatures to get more money, which at one point you got to be like, honey, your toxic yeah. home life is a problem. Maybe, and I would never say this to anybody else, maybe go live with Poseidon? <laughs> never say that. No other circumstance. No, no but other yeah. circumstance. This one time is mm-hmm. so bad at your house that maybe. But no amount of food, nothing he could eat could end his hunger. And eventually he ate himself. Yeah. Yeah. So hardcore. It's so metal. This thing mm-hmm. that Demeter, the goddess of providing food and harvest, did to this man. There's another version where she does the exact same thing, except at the end of his life, she also sends a snake to torment him. And nice. then when he dies, she turns him into a constellation. And then she also turns the snake into the constellation to torment him for all of eternity. Oh, I love that how is, she is. That is some goddess wrath that we mm-hmm. love to see here. Truly, honestly. And I will just say one last time, Rick really did Demeter dirty. Mm-hmm. Just a touch. Just a touch. That is all. I, I, we could, again, there's so many Demeter things that I'm sure listeners are like, are they going to talk about this? Are they going to talk about this? And I'm like, gall, we, we can't so talk about everything. I'm so sorry. But of course, we want to hear your favorite things. So definitely hit us up. But before we start to transition, DJ Aaron, is there any Demeter stuff that we haven't done that, that we need to just present to the masses. I don't got anything for regarding uh, mythology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have anything else either. I feel like I learned stuff. So, Oh good. I'm so (laughs) glad. That's what this show should be. Yeah. In that case, can, uh, can I talk about ice grandma? 
Absolutely. Uh, Aaron, have you played Hades, the game? No, I haven't. I really want to. It's been on my list. When you have an opportunity, do so. Um, Mm -hmm. Ooh, this would be mild Hades spoilers. I don't care. You sure? Okay. Yeah, I sometimes look up spoilers to things because I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me. (laughs) There is actual, there have been studies that show that like having a thing spoiled and then like engaging with the media actually increases a person's enjoyment of it. Mm. That's not for me. Don't ever tell me what happens in a thing. But Mm. I can understand. I also do like looking up plots to movies I know I'm not going to watch. Horror movies especially. I love (laughs) reading the plots to horror movies. Mm. Nice. No one will save you. I can't imagine doing Mm. that. Like if I have interest in something, I'm just going to be like, I'll eventually get to it. I don't know. Add it to the Mm. list. Tick. (laughs) So in Hades... Once you, you you got like the gods and stuff and Zagreus is trying to be reunited with his mother, Persephone, who is no longer in the underworld. So you're like, ah, yes. But the first time you escape from the underworld, it's winter. Everything is frozen and snowed over. And if you're someone playing the Hades game, you are familiar with Greek mythology. And you're over here like, wait, but if Persephone's not in the underworld, it should be spring and summertime up here because that's. That's the whole thing of the myth. What's going on? And then once you escape the first time, that it's only after your first escape that w- one god will finally reach out to you, and it is Demeter. Mm. And she's like, I saw you out there. I'd never seen you before, but you seem to be trying to escape this wretched place, and I'd be glad to help you because I know what it's like to try to fight against something. And so you get ice boons from Ice Grandma because she has frozen the world. Because she does not know where Persephone is at. No one knows where Persephone is at. Here is and like my cool. mind state doing that the first time. I didn't even think twice that it was ice. Really? You were just okay, like, sure. Cool. It's, it's ice. I guess that's how it is. <laughs> and she is like decked out in furs. And, then like, and she and looks then I remembered like. remembered the myth. And I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. <laughs> I was so like shocked the first time I got out. And I'm like, why is it like covered that? in ice? Where's, what do you mean she doesn't know where Persephone is? What's going on? But yeah, um, I love my ice grandma. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, if I could have the call, I love, there's a great meme of like, oh, the, like that, that weird, like wrestling meme with like the really strong guy and the, the skinny dude in the leotard. And it's like, God of the underworld. It's like me with my grandma on speed dial. <laughs> because Demeter's call is one of my favorites to have. Demeter's call is good, but I'm still going to get Artemis or uh, Aphrodite every they time. Are, they are very good. No, those are the most useful ones. That's the only time I've gotten out is if I've had one of their calls. Because they're just... Listen, you hit Hades with a charm and all of a sudden he doesn't attack you for like six seconds? Oh my god. Yeah, and then you can So like, useful. It charges up every like five seconds. You can hit him just repeatedly. Mm-hmm. It's great. Art- Artemis is sending the tracking one that does this intense damage. Yeah, no, they're a great. Ton of but damage. I I loved and in this one the in Hades just does a great job of hashtag no incest. Mm, I love that. So the uh, gods and the goddesses are not all children of Kronos and Rhea. The goddesses were actually mm-hmm. daughters of a different Titan. And then Persephone is not a child of Zeus. She's actually the child of that mortal guy we talked about earlier (laughs) who was killed by the gods. And so Demeter has a lot of bitterness to it. And it's also suggested like that's the reason Zagreus has red blood and can die because his grandfather on his mother's side was mortal. Ah, he's a quarter mortal. I get it. (laughs) Just a quarter. I, I, I really like how Demeter is done in that one because I think I mean she's pissed her daughter's gone she doesn't know what happened but it's also not like you don't get the sense well you do find out from Persephone later that she's like I did really want to get out of Olympus actually and so it is kind of suggested that maybe there was a little bit of an overbearing relationship with Demeter but that does not appear to be the like it seems to be more that Persephone wasn't satisfied in Olympus and not with the relationship with her mother it's also, it seems to be that Persephone was more along the lines of dropped onto Hades rather than Hades wanting it. Mm-hmm. Spoilers. We can't, that's too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gonna play the I game. guess that's fair. Well, also, we, no, we can't get into Persephone and Hades of it all. Put a pin in that. We'll circle back. We'll circle back. It's Just a meter right now. That's, that's Just a meter right now. Next week, guys. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> no, it's not a 12-part daily series yet. 
that's in December when we talk yeah, about the Christmas right. Carol. You're right. <laughs> that is Muse Miss coming soon. Back for the Be holidays. ready for it. Be excited Woo! for it because you better believe I'm excited. If you want to listen to Muse Miss now, go to patreon.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. There's a Muse Miss from last year. Very proud of that one, too. You can listen to all 12 episodes for just a dollar. Those mm-hmm. were for everybody. It's a deal. They, it's a, yeah, it's really a deal. All that is content. For everybody. It is our Christmas gift to our patrons. Yes, it's a Christmas gift to our patrons. patrons. We say everyone. We mean our patrons. <laughs> the patrons gave specifically, us money. you will get the first episode for free, though. That's true. We did that. Okay, but they're not. This is not time for plugs. <laughs> so there's Demeter in that. Uh, we've talked about Lore Olympus. Does anyone have any other? I'm going to talk about Girl Goddess Queen again. Uh, but does anyone have any other uh, Demeters they want to? So I do have one because, uh, like, I have plenty. You know, like that. She's her name is just kind of used as like a filler for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. There's a documentary on agriculture called Fields of Demeter, which is, I think is kind of fun. That's Um, very good. But the one I'm bringing to the table is this like puzzle game called Mm -hmm. Adventures of Megara Demeter's Cat Astrophe. Okay. uh, So there's there's an about this game that's about four paragraphs long. And I'm going to go ahead and read it real quick. New time management strategy game. Join Megara Ooh. during her important quest to defeat fanciful creatures, save the kitten, restore nature, and destroy towns, apologize to meet her, and find a way to return her grace to Hellas. Fascinating task. Oh, okay, that's just about the game. In gratitude <laughs> for a rich harvest, the residents of Hellas decided to arrange a holiday devoted to the goddess Demeter and present her with a basket full of food. Demeter could be grateful for such a tribute, but there was a hungry kitten walking in front of the temple. <gasps> Having seen oh the basket, the kitten jumped in and devoured all the donations <gasps> and left the crumbs and bones for Demeter. When Demeter saw the leftovers, she got angry at people and decided to punish them. All forces of nature seemed to turn against Helladians. The town started to swarm with dangerous monsters. The earth let out evil roots on, and underground <laughs> plants. Who is that hero who can save the acute situation? Take a look at the eyes of the enraged goddess of fertility and regain Demeter's grace towards Hellas. That hero is Hercules' future wife, the young Megara. Oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. I'm so sorry, Megara. <laughs> sorry, oh, Megara. I, I'm so... I, listen, happen, there's a lot of Megaras. I thought we were just picking that name. Oh, man. I'm nope. sorry, Megara. <laughs> it's the Megara. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, that one. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> wow, that... Uh, I was super into that up until that last choice. <laughs> That's a bummer. Aww. Like, I like that they're like, Oh, but Megara is more than just Hercules' wife. She also saved yeah. her city. And that's great. <laughs> it probably doesn't happen in this version of Megara. <laughs> you know, it probably doesn't happen in this yeah. version. Of Megara. Yeah. 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 It's a positive it twist. It happened in the it. Disney movie. It's just, it doesn't have to yeah. happen every this time. Got, like, mobile game art style. It's not happening to this Megara. <laughs> well, yeah. she'll be that's- fine. Why were they giving Demeter a bunch of meat? I don't know. I guess maybe, in that one maybe, thing, they sacrificed a pig, so. Maybe she's like the uh, nature witch from Dungeons and Daddies, Erin O'Neill, <laughs> in pig. which she doesn't eat plants because she's a nature witch. She eats exclusively meat. <laughs> Love it. Bet. Absolutely. No okay. notes. Moving on. <laughs> okay. It's like, why would I eat the plants? They're like my children. This is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> give me a fucking steak. <laughs> oh, DJ, thank you for bringing that to the table. That was wild. That was good. I, I <laughs> thought it was a fun twist on that. Kind That's of very good. Too. Yeah, I really like that. That's funny. See, I think someone on that uh, team really actually does like Demeter and is like, no, 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 but she, mm. you piss her off. Bad things happen. Watch in my puzzle game. Yeah. <laughs> in this puzzle. Uh, Aaron, do you have a pop culture Demeter that we should uh, discuss? I don't think so. I feel like Laura Olympus and Percy Jackson were the ones that I'm aware yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I think, well, okay, so one time I made the mistake of comments, of going into the comment section on a recent episode of Laura Olympus. Oh. And my comment oh. was, you know what? Demeter isn't completely wrong. And people really hated that. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, what my, episode my, was it? What was she doing? I don't in that remember. Point? Oh, it was like pre-courtroom. pre-court room. Like it was pre-court. Yeah. 
post like listen seeing she's done recently is like no 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 but before Mm. that her whole wanting to like raise up persephone getting like being like do your homework stand or watch like get all these Mm. rewards you're good because she's going to be heir to the barley mother fortune and Mm -hmm. also joined the to go um like eternal maidenhood and obviously this is not what persephone wants but demeter's never asked her and she's very controlling and helicopter parent but also Demeter lives in a world where gods will just shapeshift into animals and then rape young women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my point was like, yeah, in this world, Demeter is just trying to protect her daughter. And Mm -hmm. so like the things she's doing, you can't hold them to the same comparison as like what a human parent would do because she lives in a world where there are gods who just carry off young maidens. Yeah. Anyway, people in the comment section really didn't like that. And I had a lot of people getting mad at me because they clearly had bad relationships with their mother. I, I think if you said yeah. only exclusively Demeter's not entirely wrong, that comes off bad. If you had explained it. No, yeah. I had explained it, it. Yeah. That was my thing. I, uh, oh, yes, okay. TJ. If yeah, I love to. Yeah, yeah, I was like, listen, this world she's goofy. living in is like, it's not great, but this world she's living in is not as super tough and she is trying to protect Persephone. Yeah, people didn't mm-hmm. like that, which circles back to the whole like, hmm, some people really have relationships with their mothers, don't mm-hmm. they? I mean, people yeah. like things Exhibit to be a, black Darian. and white. Mm-hmm. They do. Pot they calling, do. <laughs> pot calling the kettle black, there, Darren, aren't you? Yeah, but at least I don't attack people with their takes on mythology. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you attack people in private over their takes on mythology. <laughs> DJ, DJ, DJ. What's up? I cannot believe that you've proven yourself untrustworthy in this moment. I cannot believe you. I didn't yourself. name anybody specifically. I can't believe you. You betrayed me. I will let nothing grow ever again. Oh, great. I want to talk about Demeter's portrayal in the outstanding book, Girl Goddess Queen. This is the fifth episode in a row. I think I get to talk about it, and I'm so happy. And it'll be six so. next week. Woo! <laughs> and it'll be the big one. But in this one, we also have, like, helicopter parrot Demeter. Very, very, like, very controlling over Persephone, like... Kind of puts Laura Olympus Demeter to shame and how controlling Dang. Demeter is over Persephone. Like, don't speak unless spoken to. A uh, young lady should only smile. You should be mm. demure. Like, Persephone goes by core for, like, the first third of this book mm. still. And it is very much, like, trying to, like, keep her on the island. Where she's also, like, like on Sicily, where she's put all these wards and stuff to protect her. And keep everyone away. So, like, the only person who's ever been around is, like, the nymphs who Demeter only kind of tolerates because when she was pregnant and went to Sicily to give birth, the nymphs helped her. So she Mm -hmm. also allows them to remain on the island and be around Persephone, even though she views them as a bad influence. And he's like, okay, Persephone has to be perfectly dressed and the best at all the arts. And her whole goal is to find Persephone a desirable husband. And now it's time for her to get married. And Persephone doesn't want to. She just wants to stay on the island with her mother. Well, actually, she wants to go explore the world. But if her options are leave or get married, she'd ra- or stay or get married, she'd rather stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Zeus sucks. So yeah. Demeter doesn't have a choice. And so Persephone runs away to the underworld just to try to hide there for a little while and then figure mm-hmm. out her next move. Because it's the one place where she knows her mother, who is... Because her mother says at one point in time, she's like... I can only protect you so much, and I'm goddess of the earth. There's nowhere on earth you can go that I wouldn't be able to find you. So even when you're married, like, you won't be gone for long. We will be reunited. Persephone goes down. When Demeter finds out what happens, she's enraged, all the things, yada, yada, yada. Eventually, the world, nothing is growing, and the world is freezing. And Persephone has Demeter come visit her, and she tries to explain to her that, like, this is the underworld. I've created, like, Elysium and the fields of Asphodel, and, like, I'm very happy here, and I can do all this, so you don't have to do this anymore. And Demeter's, like, basically, like, I don't care. You either come home or the humans are going to keep dying. And then eventually Zeus gets involved and is like, okay, Persephone has to come back. So Hades and Persephone go back up for a meeting and stuff where they learn, and this is, I didn't see this coming, it's not Demeter causing the winter it's the absence of persephone Ooh, Mm -hmm. interesting okay Mm -hmm. and demeter's like i did think it was me at first but then i realized it wasn't it was you in your absence she's like i didn't want to tell you that you were the cause because i didn't i I knew how much it would upset you to find out that all these people had died and it was your response it was your fault and i didn't want to do that to you which is like 
actually gets to the core of what Demeter is as a mother, where everything she does has been to try to protect Persephone, like molding mm-hmm. her into this perfect version of like the this like ancient Greek ideal of a wife. So when it came time for Zeus to demand she be married off, Demeter could try to find someone who would treat her daughter well. Mm-hmm. And that's what she was trying to do. And she could have her pick of the litter. Yeah, basically exactly that. Someone who would not be like Zeus to her daughter. And you also find out, so the reason Persephone in this book is the goddess of flowers is because when she was a child and I was at her naming ceremony and Zeus asked, what do you want? She said the world. And he mm-hmm. got like, ooh, very like, what is that about? And he's like, and what would you do with it? And she was like, I plant flowers. Like, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I just want the world. I'm a Persephone... fucking five year old, bud. Yeah, <laughs> I think she was like eight or six. Yeah, very young. But the idea is like Persephone. She is ambitious. Is she plant wants. Flowers? She like she wants the world to do with whatever she wants. She wants freedom and authority and and, and power. Like she just wants opportunity. Mm -hmm. To make things better. She plants flowers. And Zeus laughs and makes her the goddess of flowers, being like, oh, you have no power. Because he views Mm -hmm. her as like a woman who wants more than her station. So at every opportunity when they interact, he is just trying to put her down and put her down. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the, the novel, she and Demeter have this conversation And Demeter asks her, like, what's your earliest memory? And she's like, I remember my naming ceremony. She's like, yeah, I thought you, I thought that might, that's probably it. I was so scared when I, there, I was so scared for you. I didn't know it was going to happen because until that point, I told you, you could have the world. Mm -hmm. And we find out the reason Persephone actually has this ambition, the reason she asked for the world is because when she was very young, her mother basically said, you can be anything you want. You can have anything you want. Mm. And then at that ceremony, when she saw her daughter actually ask for the thing that her mother told her she could have and saw Zeus look at her like she was a threat, it scared her. And so she desperately tried to mold her daughter into something Zeus wouldn't be afraid of so he wouldn't hurt her. Mm. And that doesn't like excuse mm. the, 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 the things that she did and that, that kind of that, the trauma that came from the way Persephone was raised and basically made to feel like she was never good enough because she couldn't fit that mold. But I think it also makes Demeter endlessly more sympathetic as a character, not just like a helicopter mom with high standards, but like a woman with no power in a world, just desperately trying to protect her child and a system that will destroy her daughter if she lets it. Mm. I like that kind of like twist that she was acting that way. Like that was her motivation the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is nice, and I, 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 it definitely also the end of the the novel really like suggests that Demeter and Persephone will be able to like rebuild the relationship and have a healthy relationship going on. It just Persephone needs her own space, and Demeter needs to be able to see her daughter for who she really is, and it suggests that this Demeter as a character is going to be able to do that, and I like that. I I liked that adaptation of it and that very straightforward i also like the the twist of like but demeter did believe in persephone and what she could do it was nice i like the yeah yeah, girl goddess queen is great y'all leave us a review (laughs) take a screenshot (laughs) of it let me maybe send you a book please please tell us that you like the podcast we work really hard on it we have cool guests like aaron (laughs) hey aaron why don't you tell our listeners where they can find more of you because i feel an episode wrapping up here I would love to. Um, you can find Camp Half Pod on all of the podcasting platforms. Our social media is at Camp Half Pod. We are mostly just on Instagram. There's also a Twitter. Mm-hmm. There is a TikTok. I don't think we've made a single one, so you don't need to look there. <laughs> and you can find me. You can find me through Camp Half Pod's account if you are interested in in following me and seeing what I'm up to. Yeah. yeah links to Camp Half-Blood stuff. Well, specifically their link tree, that's usually what I link to. That'll be in the show notes. Go find it. (laughs) Hey, you heard Monica last week. You heard Aaron this week. There is no reason you should not go hear them together at all times because they are excellent. Yes, we get weirder when we're together, so. (laughs) Yeah, the way, if any listener has ever listened to any of the sporadic episodes where DJ and I have been a solo guest on someone else's podcast, Mm. they will know that is not the vibe that you will find at this show. There is an energy when the co-hosts are together. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, Aaron, thank you again so much for joining us and for also like sharing your dolphin girl insight and your uh, unique no, history with Demeter. It was a privilege. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. And thanks for I got a little lesson on some of the some oh, of the mythology. I'm, I'm so glad that thank makes, you for oh. all your research. Oh, I try very hard. <laughs> I bet, it, yeah. oh, it makes me so happy when other podcasters are like, I learned something. And I'm like, really? Yeah. You did? <laughs> Oh, yeah. You do this, too. Ah, all right, listeners, thank you so much. Uh, DJ already plugged our Patreon. <laughs> so, you know. Patreon.com forward slash Muses Mythology. Be there or be square. Mm. <laughs> thank you, listeners, so much for joining us. And until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Muses of Mythology is created and hosted by Darren and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darren Smart. The show is produced by Darren and DJ Smart, as well as Tim O'Connor. The Crystal con man nicholas miller our music is athens festival by martin hayne and our cover art is by audrey miller you can find her at on instagram at bombshell nutshell art want more muses and mythology support the show on patreon just one dollar gets you exclusive bonus content get more at patreon.com forward slash muses of mythology you can also support the show by leaving a review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash muses of mythology or tell a friend why you love the show don't forget to check out all of our episodes and episode transcripts at musicmythology.com. Thanks for listening.